Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves out in North Dakota, where a sovereign citizen doesn't believe that he's under the jurisdiction of that state because he apparently thinks that uh, the state goes by maritime law. Okay, landlocked state that uh, goes by maritime law. Okay, whatever you say, Mr. Softard. I hope nobody else lives in your little fantasy land. In the meantime, let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, next case is the court's gonna call will be State of North Dakota versus Michael Scott Jacobson, file 26, 2023, CR 36, 26, 2023, CR 16, and 26, 2023, CR 50. Present in court, attorney Mary Depute for the state. I'm here by special appearance as the executive. Well. No shit. Well, whoopity freaking do, you smooth brain crayon eater. But let's see how far this will go with the judge and how much he will tolerate this uh, sovereign citizen nonsense. This should be interesting. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Mr. Jacobson is personally present and without counsel. Sir, good morning. Were you present in court when your rights were read to you earlier? Sir, I don't consent to this hearing because of lack of jurisdiction of the court over me. I'm not a 14th Amendment citizen anymore. And it's in my documentation that no, no, no one ever reads. Oh, you're no longer a 14th Amendment citizen of the United States. Well, dude, you're still technically a citizen of the United States, considering that you were born in this country unless you uh, renounced your citizenship in that particular case maybe you should pick another country to live in and go play those sovereign citizen games over there might i suggest north korea i hear they love sovereign citizens over there but at any rate uh yeah jurisdiction issue yeah if you committed these offenses in uh North Dakota, which is where you're at, yeah, you are definitely under their jurisdiction at that point. So, my little smooth brain soft tart friend, what else have you got for us today? Sir, I asked you a question. I, I told you. So, I am not, sir, I, I'm not. Sir, under stop your talking over me. I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to answer the question. I don't understand. So, I'm asking you. Were you here when the rights video was played not once but twice this morning? I was here. Do you understand the rights as they were read to you? I don't stand under anybody. I'm asking if you understand the rights that were played for you. I don't understand. Okay. So let's talk about what you do and don't understand, sir. Do you understand the English language? You do not have jurisdiction over me. You look at the documentation. Answer my question, sir. Oh, you provided documentation. Well, then, I'm sure it must be riddled with uh, sovereign citizen nonsense that wouldn't make it uh, very far in a court of law. Oh, wait, you're already in a court of law. So, therefore, it probably didn't really make it that far if they actually read it. Because, you know what? Unlike you, they are actually educated in the law. Do not have jurisdiction over me. Answer the question, sir. Do you understand the English language? I don't understand. Okay. So I'm asking you if you understand the English language. I don't stand uh, under so, anybody. Sir. Of course he doesn't comprehend the English language. Because if he actually did, then he would know that understand and comprehend are pretty much synonyms of each other. That means they're similar, dumbass. And therefore, he wouldn't be presenting with this uh, rather stupid little uh, soft hard word game salad that they like to do. I'm asking you if you understand English. I asked the question in English. You responded in English. 
I think you understand. Your answer. But I'm making a record, sir, to make sure that we're clear. My record is you don't have jurisdiction over me. And so well, I'm not a 14th Amendment sir. Citizen, citizen or resident. Sir. You even know what I've done? I've, I've changed my I've changed my jurisdiction. I've gotten out of the jurisdiction of the water, and I'm back on the land. Oh, great! He's uh, arguing about admiralty law now. That's the reason why he thinks he's no longer in your jurisdiction, uh, dude. That's not exactly how that works, right there. You might want to rethink your legal strategy or go consult an actual attorney because, well, it just shows that. You don't have a single ounce of gray matter floating around in that uh, what thing that you call a head at this point. So go seek out some help. Sir, I'm alive. I'm a living, breathing soul. And you cannot contract with me anyways. Yeah, I'm not contracting with you at all. I'm asking you That's if you understand. Sir, stop talking out of turn. Are we clear? I'm asking you, do you understand the English language? You've answered that already. So your answer is yes, you understand. You answered it. I'm asking you to answer it, sir. You've answered it yourself. It's not for me to decide. It's for you to put on the record whether you understand the English language or not. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I don't stand under anybody. That wasn't the question. We're not going to get anywhere. You do not have jurisdiction over me. Sir, if you agreed. If you would read my affidavit. Were you present in court when your rights were read to you earlier? I've been in court many times, and I've heard those rights. And so you understand those rights? I don't stand under anybody. That wasn't the question. Do you understand? You're answering, asking me to do. I don't stand under you. Sir, you've already said you made a special appearance. So I'm asking you if you understand. Do you understand? I comprehend them. Goody, 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 goody. The judge has made it through the soft hard language barrier. Maybe he will be able to get something done with this uh, moron. Okay, comprehension is good enough. You comprehend them. All right. Do you comprehend that you have the right to an attorney? I don't need an attorney. Do you comprehend that you have the right to either an appointed attorney if you financially qualify for one, the right to hire an attorney of your choosing with the right to represent yourself if you can do so knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently. I don't consent to this hearing because I'm not under your jurisdiction. Well, I am sorry to break it to you, dumbass, but uh, if you truly, truly believe that, then you would not be here at this point. You would be back in your bed, dreaming all your soft, hard dreams. But no, you're in this court, which basically means that you do recognize this uh, court's authority over you, because deep down, you know you're wrong. Sir, the jurisdiction of the land. Uh, I Not understand in the jurisdiction, of sir, the, of, of your contract law. Okay. Do you comprehend your rights to an attorney? I don't need an attorney. Has anyone threatened you? Forced no you? Threatened me? So let me finish before you start talking, here. sir. I've been here the last seven times. Stop. Nothing has happened. Read Stop, Tell, sir. Stop interrupting. Stop trying to talk over me. I'm asking you a question. Has anyone threatened you, forced you, or coerced you, or in any way made any promises to you in order to get you to waive your right to an attorney? No one has. Thank you. <clears throat> so we are here today for a number of dispositional conferences. A dispositional conference is a conference set to determine how you intend to proceed. Your Honor, if I can interject, I'm sorry, but I think there's a little more complexity to this, this uh, procedural posture. In case 16, the defendant had filed a motion to dismiss. The motion to dismiss the response was filed with the state on June 28th. Uh, the, at the last status conference, the defendant wished to raise the same motion in all three of his cases. Mm -hmm. The, at that time, it had not been served in the two remaining cases. Although the uh, 
motion was not, still has not been served. It has been filed in the two remaining cases. And so I believe that there is a pending motion before the court uh, in all three cases. So this wasn't noticed as a motion hearing. Rule 3.2 requires that the moving party file a notice of motion declaring whether or not the motion is to be heard for oral argument, to be heard for an evidentiary hearing, or to be considered under briefs. That notice of motion wasn't filed requesting a hearing. So today it's not properly before the court, even if it was properly served. I brought it to the court. Sir, court. I could not get a hold of this. So stop. So basically, uh, due to your inexperience with how the process works, it was filed uh, poorly and didn't make it through. Uh, you should really reconsider uh, an attorney. Maybe you actually need some help. This is where I'm talking. So those motions have not been served. So technically, even if the states file their response, they're not ripe for the court's consideration. So the court is not going to take up motions. Furthermore, these are Judge Naram's cases. I'm not going to rule on motions in Judge Naram's case or cases that are not properly before the court and noticed for hearing. So as far as the court's concerned, all that's before it today properly is a dispositional conference. Sir, you have five options at a dispositional conference. You can schedule it for a jury trial. You can request a bench trial. And if the prosecutor agrees and the court agrees, the court can schedule it as a bench trial. You can request a continuance. You can change your pleas from not guilty to guilty today. Or you lastly can choose to schedule a change of plea for a later date. Well, let's do a continuance until Judge and Aaron gets the case so we can make a decision on it. All right. So what I told you before is right now those issues aren't properly before the court because they haven't been served properly following the rules. Serve them properly, we'll just do a continuance of All right, Ms. Depute, your thoughts? Um, that seems appropriate to me. I believe that the last, I, maybe there are not uh, notes in the docket. I believe it was contemplated by the previous judge that this would be a motion hearing and it was discussed at that time. Um, the state is ready to proceed. But if your honor doesn't wish to hear it today, then I believe continue it until Judge Nairn could hear the motion would be appropriate. So, okay. Could you make a decision before you even go, you can go back to trial? I suppose I have to file that. Too, then, right? Yes. So Judge Nairn's next court date in McIntosh County is six weeks away. That'd be fine. It's November 13. We can't get nothing done if there's another judge here. We gotta have Judge Nairn. Well, he's assigned to these cases, and typically once a judge has been assigned, unless there's an agreement or stipulation between the parties, I'm not going to sign a motion or consider a motion that wasn't on the docket as a motion hearing. So I will continue this matter, all three matters, for a dispositional conference and a motion hearing for November 13, 2023, before Judge Naram. It'll be set at 9.30 a.m., but I'm sure Judge Naram will call that case last. Just so you're aware of that, uh, Mr. Jacobson, it probably will be late morning before that motion is heard. Uh, ultimately, Judge Naram will be able to decide the motions, assuming that they are properly before the court at that time. And so that means proper service, proper notice of motion, uh, you'll need to file a 3.2 notice of motion that declares whether it's for evidentiary hearing purposes, oral argument hearing purposes, or both. And at that time, Judge Naram can make decisions. So that'll be the decision of the court today. Continuance in all three files until November 13, before Judge Naram at 9.30 a.m. Anything else, Ms. Depute? And to clear up part of the record, in case 16, it was noticed as a motion hearing. I understand the judge's ruling. I just want to make sure that what's represented is correct. But I, other than that, I have no further comment. Yeah, I remember him telling me to file motions for the other three to put them all three on the same date. Yeah. So as a matter of judicial economy, even if it was, it's not an, an odyssey
the code that I was looking at isn't an odyssey saying that it was a motion hearing. But the notice of hearing document does say and motion hearing. But in the Odyssey record, it just says misdemeanor dispositional conference on file 16. On the others, it has not been cleared up. So in the interest of judicial economy, those will track together if it's the same motion in all three files. So, all right, with that, we're adjourned in this matter. Thank you. Well, it seems like your jurisdiction argument didn't work out too well for you. Uh, so there's always the next hearing that you can try that at, but I doubt it'll hold any water or get as much traction as it failed to do here. So good luck, you smooth brain soft hard. You're going to need it. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.